This week I'm working on this Fiat 500 which has quite a large dent across the midsection of the front wing. But watch closely as I'll show you all the techniques I use to carry out a successful repair with no filler or paint. Hi everyone, it's Jake here from First Track Dents and welcome back for another Paintless Dent Repair video. So, as you saw in the intro, today we're working on this Fiat 500, which is quite a substantial dent right across the midsection of the front wing. Now, being on a light shade of color, it's difficult to see the full extent of the damage. So, as always, before I jump into this repair, let's first analyze all the different areas of this damage that need to be addressed. So first of all, let's take a look at the total size of this dent. It's approximately 220 millimeters wide and 170 millimeters in height. And if we look at the damage under the LED light, we can see that this dent has a total of four crowns. This is crown number one here, which is situated near the front part of the wing. And as we pan across to the back section of the wing here, we can see crown number two. As the impact force has come down on this wing, it's created a bulge on the flat section of the wheel arch profile, which is crown number three. We can also see a couple of minor indentations just above this crown. Now this crown at the front of the wing only showed up with a light on it. This takes us up to crown number four. This shows us the importance of always checking the surrounding area for additional damage. Now this view shows us a lot more detail. Here in blue, I've highlighted the complete low area and in yellow, I've highlighted the deepest and sharpest parts of this damage. Right, time to jump in to this repair. Because there's a slight misty rain in the air today, to keep the panel dry, I've decided to put the umbrella up. So I'm trying out these new panel preparation wipes today from Glexo as I'm going to start the repair with some cold glue pulling. So first I need to open the packet up and wipe the moist tissue over the panel. I'm guessing that will remove any contaminants and give me better adhesion with the cold glue. Next I select the largest tab in my kit and screw it onto the end of my slide hammer. As it's a very cold and damp day today, I'm using a bit of heat to help get the glue up to its optimal working temperature. This includes warming up the panel slightly. Using a twist in action, I press the glue into the low areas of the panel and give some hard pulls on the slide hammer to try and pull the damage up. I have to be quite careful as the metal is quite soft on this panel. It's working quite well on the front of the wing, although as we get into the midsection of the wing, the dent is much tighter and much more difficult to pull up. So a quick review shows that a huge majority of this damage has come up quite well. I just need to try and get some of the tighter areas up. So I'm switching to the smaller cold glue tab as this should work more effectively. So as before, I press the slide hammer with the glue onto the panel and use some quick sharp pulls to try and pull these tight areas up. The metal is very tight here, so I need to go over the same areas quite a few times. It's definitely bringing some of these low areas up, but I know I will have to go in behind with the bars later to finish these off. Although next, I'm going to deal with some of the crowns. I'm now moving the light up to the front section of the wing here so I can get a good view of this minor crown here at the front. This is what I call secondary damage, which has resulted from the main impact. To remove this crown, I'm using this round plastic tip on my knockdown. So this is a fairly easy crown to knock down. I just need to slowly and carefully work my way across this crown using the right pressure, ensuring I don't put any hammer marks into the panel. To get the best result of a crown like this, you need to take your time and work accurately. If you do this, you won't need to do any more to it. And as you can see, it's smoothed back down nicely and I haven't created any micro lows that need lifting back up. Now I'm moving the light back over to work on the second crown shown here. This crown is a lot sharper than the first crown, although I need to treat this crown exactly like I did the first one. So I'm using the same plastic tip and I'm taking my time once again to make sure I use the right amount of pressure and force to prevent creating any additional damage. There is a tendency to want to hit these crowns down hard and fast, but patience is the key here if you want to have a lot less cleanup time at the end of the repair. I'm now switching up to my standard rubber tip. This will help me remove some of the softer parts of the crown that the hard round plastic tip was unable to tap down. 
Again, I take my time and work my way over the entire crown, blending it back in again. And there we go, that will do for now. Removing that crown will have taken some pressure out of the main dent, which we will come back to later. Next, I'm going to deal with the crown at the back end of the front wing here. But if you look closely, we have two or three minor crowns in a row. I'm back using my hard plastic tip for this crown and again, taking my time and not rushing so I can be more accurate with my tap downs. And as you can see, as we pan across, all the crowns have been tapped back down nicely. Time to start lifting up all the low areas. So in order to get on the back of this den, I need to lower the plastic stone guard trim underneath. So I'm using a gentle bit of heat here to make it slightly more flexible and easier to move. Then using my trim removal tool, I can unclip the plastic trim from underneath, which then gives me enough room to get my hands in behind to pull it down slightly. I'm going to work on the deepest low point of this damage first, so I'm placing my light in the best position to view it. To lift this dent up, I'm going to use my standard rubber tip, as that will allow me to push up a lot of metal easily. First, I heat the panel up slightly to make sure the paint won't crack when pushing behind. Next, I can slide the bar in behind the panel to get a good position on the rear of the dent. I can then give some controlled pushes to the back of the dent to bring the metal out evenly and cleanly without creating any additional damage. As you can see, it's a slow controlled process which takes a lot of time and requires a lot of patience. To tap down any high areas created from the pushes behind, I'm using my plastic bullet tip on the end of my knockdown. I use the tap down to remove any low spots that have been created from the pushing up process and any low areas that have been created around the perimeter of the dent as a result of pushing up the center of this low section. Right, now to move the board over slightly so I can work on this low section over the middle part of the wing shown here. As this is a larger size dent, I'm going to switch to using my large rubber tip as this will be more effective in pushing this section up. Again, I'm using plenty of heat to keep the paint soft and to prevent it from cracking. I then slide the bar underneath and start working on lifting all this low area up. This is the largest section to lift up, so it takes quite a bit of time to move the bar around the whole area to lift it up cleanly. Once I've lifted up as much as I can with a large rubber tip, I then switch to using the standard rubber tip to lift up any tighter areas that were on the wheel arch edge. So again, as you can see, I move around the wheel arch from side to side, lifting up the long low ridge. Now with any pushing from behind, some sections will come up higher than needed. That's the nature of this process. So using my plastic bullet tip on my knockdown, I just tap these areas back down again. Now that's done, I'm going to focus on removing this curved crease just near the front section of the wing here. So first I need to move my LED board into the correct position to get a good view of this crease. Heat is very important here to reduce the risk of damaging the paintwork. So for this dent, I'm going to use my plastic vinyl tip. So I slide the bar underneath and start moving up and down this wing to bring this soft crease out nice and evenly. Removing the crown earlier just beside it has helped to take some of the tension out of this crease so the metal is able to flow back upwards more easily. With lots of careful and controlled pushes, you can see the metal is flowing back up nicely. I'm using my plastic bullet tip to tap down any high areas created from the pushing up process. I'm also using my blending hammer to remove the very soft crowns at the edge of where the crease was and to blend them back down again. The crowns were only very slight and just about visible to the naked eye, but still needed removing. A quick review at the halfway point shows that the top section of the panel is completely back to its original shape. Now this is the large bulge or crown that I noted earlier in my analysis right on the flat section of the wheel arch as shown here. So to remove this, I'm using my tap down hammer with a large rubber tip to slowly push the bulge back into the correct shape again. And there you go, the flat section is now completely level again. 
OK, let's review the whole panel again. We can see that the wing is now back to its original shape, apart from a few micro lows and micro highs. So I'm going to gently heat the panel up again, and then I'm going in behind with my finer tips on my PDR bar to bring up all these lows to get the panel nice and level again. As you can see, to do this, I need to work from several different angles to make sure I cover the whole panel. You can see by this shot here how detailed and precise you need to be in order to bring up these micro lows. I'm then using my fine plastic bullet tip to tap down all the micro highs. As I spent a lot of time on this repair, I only need to use a super fine polish to remove any fine scratches and any surface marks made by the tap down tools. I work the polish into the panel, making sure I cover the complete repair area. This will also give the panel a nice glossy shine. Once this has been completed, I can wipe the panel down to give it a last inspection. Now that I'm happy with the repair, the last thing to do is to push the plastic stone guard back into place, give the panel its final wipe down and check out the final result. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Maybe I might be able to do a job soon where it isn't raining and I don't have to put the umbrella up. And just to mention at the beginning of the repair, after I'd finished using the cold glue pulling system, there was obviously the option to use the hot glue pulling system, as you've seen me use before, to lift some of this damage up. But being it was a front wing with lots of really good access to the rear of the damage, I didn't see the point of spending a lot of time on that process when I had a lot more control bringing the damage up and pushing it up from behind and I would have had to have gone behind eventually using the PDR bars to do all the fine detail work. As always, if you enjoyed the video, it'd be great to get a thumbs up, and if you aren't subscribed already, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to be kept in touch with all the latest videos. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all on the next video.